lesson four, part A. We're going to be looking at electrical power. Dr. Ken here with you. So about this lesson, we're going to introduce you to the concept of uh, power, energy, and work as we lead up to electrical power. But this is a precursor. So we're going to look at uh, how mechanical energy operates. And uh, if you wanted to follow along in the textbook, this is section 4.1, energy and work. So energy and work. Energy is the ability to do some form of work. Energy can only exist in a form such as heat, light, or as a force. You cannot create or destroy energy. And this is called the conservation of energy. So all energy and matter conserve energy. You can transform it, you can change it, you can manipulate it, but you can't create it and you can't destroy it. Can only be transformed from one form to another. So we can take mechanical energy and we can transform it into electrical energy. We can take heat energy and transform it into electrical energy so on and so forth. So energy and matter come in lots and lots of different forms and we can transfer them from one form to another. And when we do that, work has happened. And energy in this context is measured in joules. That's J-O-U-L-E-S, joules. So let's look at work in particular. Work is done when energy is transformed from one form to another, as I've just mentioned. So whenever we transfer heat into mechanical energy and then mechanical energy into electrical energy, work is done. The amount of work done equals the amount of energy that has been transformed. So if we've transformed so many joules of heat energy into electrical energy, then that's when work has been done. Work, like energy, is therefore also measured in joules. Work is done when a force is applied to an object and causes it to move in a certain direction at a certain distance. Work is always against some kind of resistance such as gravity, friction, or some other opposing force. That's always important to remember. Work is always against something, always against some form of resistance, and that applies to mechanical things, and as we'll see, to electrical things. So the formula is work done is equal to the force multiplied by the distance. Where the work done is measured in joules, the force is measured in newtons after Mr. Newton, that's Isaac Newton, and distance is measured in meters, so that's the SI unit for distance, meters. So the joule, let's have a quick look at that. One joule of work is done when a force of one newton is moved through a distance of one meter in the direction of the force that's trying to move it. And I've put a little graphic here on the screen. I'll just run up my pens. Give me a sec to get the uh, pen up and running. And you can see here we have a hammer and you can see the blue aura around the hammer because we've got gravity wanting to drop the hammer, but until the hammer starts moving, that's just called potential energy. Once the hammer begins to move or to travel, it's called kinetic energy, and we'll look at these things in a bit more detail shortly. But once the hammer has actually struck the nail and the nail has moved through the timber, we've moved the nail over a set distance and through some amount of force. So we've had force applied. It's not the hammer that's moving that we're interested in, it's actually the nail. So the nail has moved from sitting above the timber, its momentum has been overcome, it's been driven through the timber, and the friction as it drives through the timber would have also wanted to uh, push back 
or offer resistance. So it is the actual nail being driven into the wood where work was done. So potential energy was where there was the possibility of the hammer dropping. There's kinetic energy while the hammer is dropping. But once the hammer actually makes contact with the nail and pushes it through the timber, therefore mechanical energy is done or, as we say, work has happened. So we've actually had work happened because the nail has moved through the timber. So this brings us on to force. So force equals the mass times the acceleration. So the amount of force to move that nail meant we needed to know the mass of the nail and the acceleration of how quickly it moved through the piece of timber. So that is force is equal to MA. So force equals the mass multiplied by acceleration. Where? Force F is in Newtons, the mass is in kilograms, that's just the SI units for mass in kilograms or thousands of grams, and acceleration, lowercase a, in meters per second per second. So that's written as meters per second squared. So you can write per second per second or you can go meters per second squared. So got all that in our heads, what's a Newton? So one Newton is defined as the force required to accelerate a one kilogram mass by a rate of one meter per second per second. So our little nail that we saw in the timber, the amount of Newtons depends on the mass of the nail and its acceleration through the piece of timber. So here's a little example. Got a forklift truck and it raises a 200 kilogram load through a distance of two meters against a force of 9.18 meters per second squared. That is force applied against gravity. So we're lifting our weight of 200 kilos against the force of gravity. Rotational energy. Rotational energy has its own special name and that's called torque. So when you're applying force to nuts and bolts, it's called torque. And torque is the amount of force over the radial arm that's delivering it. So you can see here, I've got a force of one. Oh, I'll just go back, got a bit ahead of ourselves. I've got a force of one at this, at 100 millimeters radius, but at 200 millimeters radius, I've got a force of two. I've doubled the force. So this fulcrum effect, or this leverage effect, is how spanners work. The longer the spanner handle, the more force you can apply. Which of course brings us to torque, um, capital T for torque, and force multiplied by the radius. Where torque is in Newton meters, so that's Newtons or force measured over a certain distance, so Newton meters. R is the distance between the fulcrum and the applied force in meters, in other words, the radius. And F is the applied force in Newtons itself. So what is potential and kinetic energy? I already started to introduce you to that concept a couple of slides back. And potential energy over here, get my pen up, so here's potential energy, so if we have a load of 200 grams, it has a potential energy of 3.92 kilojoules, because it's 2 meters above a fixed point. If I then allow that 200 grams to fall, the two meters, bang on the ground over here, as it's falling, we have kinetic energy. So our potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. Still the same amount. 
still the same amount of energy, but it's now converted from potential or the possibility of energy into kinetic energy as it falls. So kinetic energy is a half mv squared in joules. So funny little formula where m is the mass in kilograms, v is the velocity in meters per second. So different forms of potential energy. All forms of energy can be classified as either potential or kinetic. Potential energy is stored energy waiting to be used. So forms of potential energy include chemical energy stored in a battery, that's potential energy. So while it's stored, the energy stored in the bonds of atoms and molecules. So some examples of biomass, petroleum, natural gases, coal. These are all chemical forms of energy. It's gravitational energy, that's energy stored up due to height, such as falling water that drives a turbine in the hydro scheme. And nuclear energy, where energy is stored in the nucleus of an atom that holds that nucleus together. By, re by pulling the atom apart, we release all that nuclear energy. So they are all forms of potential energy. So nuclear energy in particular is about releasing energy from those bonds. So quite often we call it splitting the atom because nuclear power plants generate electricity by using the heat obtained from a fission reaction which releases large amounts of heat energy. So we have a thing called the fissionable nucleus. So it's normally an a very um, an isotope that's sitting on the edge just ready to be blown apart and an incident neutron is then forced into that and it breaks up forcing itself into other things and other neutrons are released and then those neutrons in turn are forced into more atoms and molecules and they in turn explode and we end up with that thing called a chain reaction. And as that chain reaction, while ever there's fissionable material, that's material that has the right uh, nature and construction to be um, broken up by these neutrons, that reaction continues and lots and lots and lots of heat energy is produced. And that's how nuclear fission operates. So what about forms of kinetic energy? So that was potential energy. Now forms of kinetic energy. Forms of kinetic energy used to generate electricity. These include radiant energy, electromagnetic energy such as visible light, which can be converted into electricity using solar panels. So that's kinetic energy. Thermal energy, that's the heat, that's the stuff you feel. Vibration and movement of atoms and molecules due to being heated by a potential energy source. So all forms of thermal energy are kinetic. And motion energy, so movement such as wind power, hydro from falling water, rotational energy from a turbine, etc. These are all kinetic forms of energy. So there we have it. We have our potential energy, kinetic energy, and mechanical energy. Potential energy, as its name implies, with our hammer. In this particular case, we've got a bit of gravity, so it has the potential to force the nail through the wood. The kinetic energy, in this case mechanical energy, so we've got mechanical energy, Energy is the hammer moves through space and we have the mass of the hammer moving at a particular rate, so many meters per second per second. And then finally when the hammer hits the nail and drives it through, then mechanical energy has been expended, force has been applied and 
work has been done. So mechanical energy is the same thing as work. Work is done when energy is transformed from one form to another. The amount of work done equals the amount of energy transformed. Work like energy is therefore measured in joules. So that ends lesson four, part A. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the different forms that energy takes in potential kinetic and mechanical energy.